Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing great. My name is Israel Reese, and as a part of our web development course, I will have the pleasure of presenting to you information about Chrome Developer Tools or uh, Chrome Dev Tools. And um, well, I chose this topic because I remember when we started out with um, Web Development 130, um, I, I thought to myself a lot, I, I wish there were a way where um, I could see what I'm coding is doing or without having to use a live server because we could check live server and see what was going on. But um, I, I thought to myself, there, there's, there has to be a way to be able to see what's, what's going on. And well, of course, um, Chrome Developer Tools is the, the perfect solution for us to be able to see what's going on with the, our websites and the content and everything. So um, the information that I'm going to share, it's mainly from the developer.com website. There, there's a lot of information out there. I found um, the information that was here to be um, very beneficial. And um, well, how does uh, Google define or describe the Chrome Dev Tools? It says it's a Chrome Dev Tools is a set of web developer tools built directly into the Google Chrome browser. Dev Tools can help you edit pages on the fly and diagnose problems quickly, which ultimately helps you build better websites faster. So uh, sounds great. But basically, well, as we can see, Chrome Dev Tools is um, web developer tools built into uh, Google Chrome, and it helps us edit the pages and diagnose problems, um, which will help us be uh, better at, at putting together these um, these websites. So um, there's a lot of information on, on this um, website alone. Um, there's information about how Chrome Dev Tools helps us with elements and the console. There, there's a lot of, when we open it, we're going to see a lot of different um, panels and um, like console sources network and um, how we can work with, with CSS and um, and debug. So there's great information here, which you could also use as, as a source. And well, there's lots of great videos and, and, and things as well. So um, there's a, a lot. The first thing that we should take into consideration is how, how we're going to open uh, dev tools. So we can do it by right clicking and then um, doing inspect. So um, right click inspect and it opens it uh, right up. Uh, I remember that before I would just right click anywhere and uh, click on inspect. But um, we, if we right click on specific places, for example, maybe if I, I want to inspect this here, I can right click in that area or whatever I want to inspect and, and it'll it'll directly go to um, uh, whatever I, I want to inspect. So as opposed to doing what I used to do, which was um, just right clicking anywhere, we can actually choose what we want to inspect it and right click there. So that's one way to open up um, dev tools. Another way is uh, control shift C or, or command option C. So I can just control shift C and uh, that'll open it right up. If we wanna uh, open it up and go directly into working with Java, then um, it would be a uh, control shift J or command option J. And that takes us right into the console where we can work with uh, Java. So we have those different options for um, opening up. So it could be, uh, I'll do control shift C and it opens up our um, dev tool. So we can see there's a, a lot of different panels. For example, we have the elements panel, sources, console, CSS overview, lighthouse network. So there's plenty that, that we can do with the panels. Um, but to start out, well, we can go here to uh, our device mode. So this is where we can see um, our uh, device mode and, and we can um, have different viewports. So like we learned in week two, um, people are looking at our content through all kinds of, of different um, viewports. So this is a great way of seeing how we could, um, seeing how others would, would see the content across um, different, different devices. So um, here what we have is um, a simulation of, of different mobile devices so that way we can get an idea of um, how uh, our content will look on, on different devices. Now, this here at the top, we can toggle it. So um, if we don't want to use the different options that we have there, we could toggle it here um, at the top, or we could also um, toggle it by um, Control-Shift-M, so Control-Shift-M or Command-Option-M. 
So that way we can go into it because it might not appear for everyone. If it doesn't, then you can toggle it here and then we get the, the different options for being able to have um, different viewports. Now, something that's great is right here at the top, it's already, um, we have some, some preset sizes. For example, we can just click here and it takes us to a small mobile device or um, a medium mobile device, which would be 375 pixels, a large mobile device, could be a tablet, so um, this is great because it's already preset in there and we can just click on it. Of course, we can do um, have it be responsive and, and move it ourselves, but maybe if we don't wanna guess what the device, the size of the device could be, we just click on it there. And um, it goes up to laptop and then there's even, well, there's laptop, uh, a large laptop. And then we even have um, a 4K, uh large screen so we can we can look we can see what our content would look like on um on different devices and then of course we can also use um uh, a responsive view where we can just set it ourselves now something that's great since we just recently well i, I mean i just recently started working with, with media queries or we were just introduced to media queries is we can also use um a setting here where it says show media queries so that way, uh, well, before this, I remember I was going back and forth trying to see what, what it would look like in these different views, but we can just click on, depending on the media queries that we set, um, the blue one would be our max width. So we could take a look at what our content would look like in max width. And then the orange one would be our, um, our min width, our minimum width. So that's great because depending on the media queries that we set, we can just um, go back and forth and, and take a look at them just by um, clicking on, on um, clicking there and then being able to take a look at, at what our um, devices would look like or what the content would look like on the devices. We've also got, well, um, we've seen this before, I believe, where we can choose different phones, different phone sizes and what it would look like. Um, there's also an option where in some cases where it, it says show device frame. So we could, uh, if we want to, turn in a, an assignment where we've got to take a screenshot of something or um, well, it, something that's interesting where it can show the device frame and we can um, look at it with the device frame there and maybe use um, a screenshot to, uh, to take a look at that. Um, we've also got a ruler here that we could use. Now, um, in the case of the ruler, if we want to set it manually, we could just click on the, the different sizes here. If we see that it gets too big and um, it's, uh, it's not fitting the screen, we, we can reduce it. So maybe I'm um, 75% in there. Um, we can also start uh, the, playing with different sizes and setting it to um, the different sizes mm -hmm. in the case that you want to um, set it manually and uh, with the rulers, set it ourselves. So um, that's something that it's just setting the, um, setting it at different sizes so that we could see what our content would look like um, on different sizes here on different size screens. So here we've also got this um, throttling, which is very interesting. Um, we With the throttling, we can simulate page performance. So what our pages would perform like um, on different bandwidths or, or, or different, could be different computers. So for example, if I were to set it to low end mobile, and then we go to um, performance, it'll um, simulate what our page would load what it would it be like to load on a, a slow computer with um a low bandwidth network and um how long it's taking to uh, to load the, the content so as we can see since i set it to low end mobile then um it's going to take a, a while to load and um but it'll give us all kinds of great information and statistics on uh, what's loaded how long it's, it's taking it to load so um right now it's taking a while because it's simulating as if it were a, a 3G network. So, um, but then it it, uh, it gives us great information on what's loaded and, and how long it's taken to load. We could uh, also set it to uh, mid-tier mobile. So it would be um, a little bit higher than, um, than the, um, in the 3G network. And then here well, we've got all kinds of information on um, how long things loaded and uh, performance wise. So I imagine we'll probably get into that more later on in the course on how well our um, websites are performing. And here we can um, test it on, we can even test it what it would look like uh, offline. So if we were to load it, um, some websites, they support 
offline content. So um, in this case, well, we have the, the Google Dino. Um, but depending on whatever the offline content would be, we could simulate that here. And um, so it could be we could simulate low bandwidth, mid, or just, just turn it off. And um, these are interesting options that we have to, um, to check um, performance. Well, then we also have um, our elements panel. So as we were looking at it um, before, so we'll hear the results of, uh, of it loading. So if we go to um, our elements panel, that's where we, uh, let's inspect, let's set this to maybe, um, so it's be a tablet or set a tablet size. We can also do it manually here to look at whatever we want to take a look at. And then uh, when we want to inspect something specifically, right click and then inspect, and then I'll go into it. So um, here we have uh, the DOM tree uh, of, in, in the elements panel. So right now we're looking at this um, elements panel. And this is where we do all of the, the DOM related activities in dev tools. So um, we can inspect directly um, from the DOM tree. So we can click on um, something that we, as we, it highlights whatever we're going to inspect. So we can click on it directly and uh, to inspect. So, um, or we can also right click to uh, inspect something uh, specific. So something that's also um, practical is we can use the keyboard. So once we've selected something, we can use the keyboard to maybe have a little more control over what we want to inspect. So we can go up and down. Um, if we want to expand or collapse lips, lists, uh, we could uh, expand them using left and right. We can uh, expand lists so we could uh, collapse lists there. So I have a little bit more control using um, our, our keyboard. So if there's something that we're looking at in the DOM tree, but maybe we don't see it on our screen, for example, maybe I want to inspect um, something that's in the in the footer. So it's not appearing here on the screen because I'm way up in the, the header. So I can uh, right click and then um, scroll into view and it'll go directly to um, to whatever I want to inspect. So for example, if I'm, or maybe if I were to inspect something um, in the header, I could, I could right click and then scroll into view and that'll take me directly to um, whatever uh, I'm interested in, in appearing in, in the view or in looking at. Uh, we could also measure what we have on our screen. For example, um, we have the, the rulers here. So we show the rulers and then it'll uh, it'll give us a size. If we look there to the left, um, we can see that the different sizes, it's in pixels of what our content is. So maybe we want to check the size of our font. So we have rulers that have appeared there and uh, give us the size of, um, of whatever is on the on the screen. So that's something that we can also use uh, are the rulers to measure the, the width and uh, the height of an element. We can uh, edit directly here in the DOM as well. So if we want to see what um, what different things would look like in, uh, so if we go to uh, maybe scroll into view, and we, could, uh, we could edit here directly. Well, we could right click and then edit text. And then whatever we were to change here would uh, appear um, as well. So if something where the text that we change in the DOM tree will also change on that website. Of course, when we reload it, it won't be there anymore, but it, we can edit there. So that way um, we can edit content or attributes and see how that would affect our, our site. Um, there's a properties pane as well. If we, if we wanna check properties up here to the right. So, um, Maybe we want to um, browse and filter the different properties of the, the DOM objects so we can we can go directly into properties there and uh, see information that that's there. The, the object's own properties um, appear first and in bold. So um, that's uh, helpful information that we could have. Um, there's also uh, badges. So um, for example, in the case that we want to um, use badges at, as references. We can uh, right click and well, we would right click in the DOM tree here in the elements, maybe right click, and then we could uh, go to badge settings. So in badge settings, 
Uh, there are badges like grid or flags or um, containers and slots. So depending on what we, we do or do not want to see, um, we can uh, hide or, or show our badges. Now, in the case of grid and flex, they can, they can um, help us a lot when we, we want to inspect, for example, what's going on in, uh, in a grid. Uh, I remember that when we, had, when we started working with grids, it was difficult to uh, understand or see exactly what was going on. And with um, here, for example, we can see uh, where it says a uh, grid. And um, well, right now we're inspecting that and, and what's going on um, with the grid. But by clicking on grid, we can click on that little badge there and um, it'll show us the overlay and um, the overlay of the columns and the rows and their numbers and gaps. So um, very helpful if, if we want to um, debug our, uh, our grid layout. So by clicking on these, well, first we can show the badges by, um, by well, right clicking and then going to the badge setting. And then um, if the badges aren't there, if they already are, then we just click them and then it gives us um, that wonderful information. It's the um, same with Flex in the case if we want to take a look at um, what's going on with Flex, we can also click on the badge and it'll show us some um, what's uh, it was valuable information related to um, what we've set there. Now, in the case of Flex, this is great. For example, if we go up here um, to the right, it, it can, uh, in the styles, well, here we have the styles panel. We have a, a Flexbox editor. So um, we click on the badge and then we can see that. But in the Flexbox editor, we click on that and then we can um, make certain changes. For example, what would it look like if it were flex direction column? So if we look here to the left, um, it gives us a, a view of that or what would it look like if we were to um, have flex direction row reverse or maybe um, column reverse. So this is very useful in, in being able to, to see, make certain changes or, or experiment a little bit before we um, before we maybe change it in our, in our code. So it's something that, that can help um, we can look at. There, then we can also um, view an element CSS. For example, if, uh, so to look at um, an element CSS, once again, we right click, uh, inspect, and then uh, we have the, the styles panel where we can see all of the, the the CSS rules that are being applied to whatever element is currently selected in the DOM tree. So whichever element we may select in the DOM tree, that'll um, show us the, the CSS. Well, in our styles panel, will show us the CSS that the CSS rules that are being applied to um, to whatever we've uh, we selected. And then we can um, add CSS declarations to um, elements. And uh, for example, if we were to add a CSS declaration here, we could go to the element there and let's say maybe, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this here. So we could add maybe background color, um, honeydew. <laughs> so we'll do background color honeydew and then we can see that it's changed. So we can make changes to CSS and. And it'll give us it'll give us an idea of what it would look like if we were to make those changes to our actual um, site. Then we could so we could change uh, make declarations to uh, elements. Then we could also add um, CSS classes. So if we were to um, inspect this here, and then um, in the case of a CSS class, we would go here where it says um, dot CLS. So we click there. And we could add a new class. Um, in this case, we would have class color me. And um, with the class color me, um, we would have this change appear there. So um, we can also toggle the classes depending on the classes that we have there. We can toggle them on, on and off. So that's something that, that can also help us to kind of see what um, the changes we made could do before maybe we, um, we start making changes. We've also got the computed panel. So um, sometimes maybe we don't need, or we don't want all of the, the cascading information. So we can go to um, the computed panel and there we can directly see the properties that are being applied to, to an element and their final value. So if we wanna um, 
click and, and expand the cascade, it, it's also there as well. But um, if we want to just focus on the, the final values or, or the, um, the uh, properties that have been applied, then we can go into the, the computed uh, pane. So as we can see, well, there's, a, there's quite a bit. Um, the support website for um, Chrome DevTools, it has a lot of uh, interactive exercise and activities that we can do that, that help us, but there is um, uh, quite a bit that, that we can do with um, our Chrome DevTools as, as we've seen. And um, well, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to do a little bit more research and get more familiar with it because um, it has given me a couple of pointers and tips which are are very, very applicable and, and make things uh, a lot easier. So, um, well, uh, you can continue exploring in, in the developer.chrome and um, there's there's plenty more that, that can be applied and, and used. And I hope that the information shared has been uh, beneficial for everyone and thank you for your attention. <laughs>